very good morning, good evening and good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is a brilliant brilliant day. It's an awesome day to be alive, an awesome moment to be alive. I'm excited today because I have got health in me. I've got a voice that is able to speak and you can be able to listen. I've got a mind that is charged up. I've got a spirit that is healthy. I've got life going on. I'm not dead. I'm not sick and I've got reason to rejoice. Even though you can send me some dollars in my bank account after listening to these episodes if they're ministering to you one way or another. This is a daily show. It's a daily podcast focused on the subjects of purpose, productivity, and resilience. Three important aspects of our lives. So if you're looking for inspiration, motivation, teaching, things that are going to affect us, to develop us, personally, this is the show. We are in the middle of a series. We've been talking about personal blockades, Christians who call it strongholds. What are these personal strongholds that are holding us, limiting us from moving forward and how can we deal with them today? We're continuing to deal with the, how you can be able to conquer mental blockades. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. One of my favorite authors in this world is a man called Dutch Sheets. He is a spiritual guy, a very big Christian prayer writer. And there's an element that I want to give you a story of what I read in his book. I think the book is called Intercessory Prayer or something of that nature. He, he tells a story of there's a time that they were in the streets, I think him and his colleagues and so on. And there was this huge built up mad person, madman charging against them and of course if it was if it was a physical matchup between Dutch sheets and this particular madman there was no contest he would have been beaten hands down but Dutch sheets engaging spiritual warfare says that he spoke some things to that particular madman and the guy was transfixed you know what he said he said we bind the spirit that is making you do this and the man was transfixed as if he was bound. You know what binding is? Binding is tying somebody, someone or something with a rope. The man was transfixed. He was bound. As in he couldn't move. That is what a blockade is all about. When I, when I equate it to a blockade, that is what it does to us. We have these mental blockades or we have these personal blockades we have in our lives that are binding us. We cannot move because we've believed these blockades as if they are facts and they are not facts. And therefore we are limited in our growth. We are limited in our potential deployment. We are limited in our development. We are limited in our success because we have blockades. And sometimes we are our own worst enemy because we've stood on our own way. We've stood on our own path. We cannot move because of this blockade. The first kind of a blockade we talked about is a mental blockade and we talked about how it is and so on. But we've been looking at how exactly are you going to circumnavigate a mental blockade? How are you going to win against a mental blockade? Number one, what did we say you do? Number one, you've got to be okay. You've got to be settled in your mind that you're okay with losing, you're okay with failing, you're okay with retrogressing because the fear of losing, the fear of failing, the fear of shame, the fear of embarrassment, the fear of regression is what up a mental blockade so that we do not attempt 
I don't want to go and ask her out because she might say no. And therefore, I stay in my mental blockade because I don't want to experience that embarrassment. I don't want to experience that, to experience that loss. I want to be okay here. You've got to be okay with whatever outcome. I had uh, Elon Musk saying when he launched this big time, uh, whatever, uh, rocket uh, in the month of October 2024. He launched a big time rocket into the atmosphere and they brought back the launcher. He said, we prepare to lose. We prepare to fail. He said, we, we've got to do it. But I mean, the... the Failure is within the probability. He's already accepted the probability of failure. But that being in mind, that being taken into consideration, they don't sit back and say we will fail. No, they go ahead and they attempt. And that's what we've got to do. When we have this idea that I might fail, you know what we're doing? We are speaking to that mental blockade in us. We're saying you don't matter. Whether I lose or I fail or I retrogress or I'm ashamed or I'm embarrassed, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to try anyway. And therefore, we deal with that blockade a big, a big blow. The second thing we've, we said you've got to do is got to prepare your mind. This mind of ours is so powerful. Sometimes it has this, this, this meditation, these negative meditations going on, telling us, oh, this, there. And, and we imagine some things based on some illusions or based on some realities. We imagine some illusions and these illusions become this big time mental blockade that we don't think is going to be removed. And the biggest mistake we make is to shut our mouth and let the mind run this negative meeting. It bashes us. And we ruminate upon it. We meditate upon it. And it becomes a big stronghold, a big blockade in our mind. I say that every time the mind starts doing this, just interrupt it and say, shut up. Shut up. We say, no. It's not going to happen. No. And then go one step ahead and start speaking. In fact, make it a make it a, a behavior, make it a habit. Every morning you wake up or every time you go to sleep, before you go to sleep, you speak some big mental affirmations. Let me not call them affirmations. You, you incantations, because these incantations are actually spiritual disciplines, can be used by the kingdom of the darkness or the kingdom of the light. Either way, they work. I am the righteousness of God. I am above only. I'm not beneath. I'm born of God. I'm 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 favored. I'm highly favored. I am strong. By my God, I can run through a troop. I can leap over a wall. I can do violently. I'm going to do exploits. I'm called a blessing. I'm blessing the city. I'm blessing the country. Uh, everything I do is blessed. Everything I touch is blessed. You do that kind of incantation every morning for five minutes, bro. Five minutes every morning. You are doing what you are cementing your mind and you're taking care of these negative things that are running in this mind. Let me tell you something. You leave your mind unattended, it's going to grow weeds. That's a guarantee. That's a fact. Okay. Yesterday we talked about what? We talked about you've got to make sure that you prepare your other faculties than just your mind. Because sometimes we focus on the mind and forget other faculties. The other faculties, they affect our minds. You change your environment and it looks like you're wealthy. You, you, you change the way you dress, by the way. The way you dress speaks up. He says, ah, I'm, I'm somebody important. In fact, they, they, this thing we normally t- tell people, dress the way you want to be addressed. Change other faculties. Your mind is going to catch up. Any blockade that is in your mind negatively is going to catch up when you say, or when you change, when you change your faculties. When, when, when the mind tells you you cannot run a particular amount of kilometers in a, a period of time, what do you do? You start training your other faculties. And before you know it, you're able to beat that and the mind is confused. Said, I thought this was impossible. And now the mind is strong, is strengthened. It's, it becomes strong because you prepared other faculties. Don't ever just sit there and, and don't do anything, especially when things are not going well for you. Sometimes what we want to do is we want to do things that are going to directly affect our mind or directly affect our pocketbook. The other things that you can be able to do that can change our psyche. And those ones are critical. Today, let's look at number four. I touched on this yesterday, but let me just go deeper on it. 
What do you do if you're going to fight mental faculties? Very important. You've got to seek inspiration. Zig Ziglar told us, many people say motivation doesn't last. Well, so does bathing and that's why we recommend it daily. Uh, people normally bash motivational speakers. They hear motivational speakers they normally say this and they are fake. Let me tell you, motivation works. It works. It works. I've told you this story many times. Someone called Peter J. Daniels. They told him, you're mentally unedicable. They said, you never amount to anything. At 26 years of age, he was out of school, don't, did, didn't have any, any college degree, or college diploma because his teachers had harangued him as he was growing up. His only biggest dream was to be a championship boxer. And at the point in time that I'm speaking, when he met motivation, he was working as a bricklayer. In Kenya, we normally call it alikuwa nafanya kwa mjengo. He was working in a construction site as a porter or something like that. And someone tells him, there's this guy, this speaker who has come into town in Australia. He's called Billy Graham. Go and listen. He goes to Billy Graham's crusade and Billy Graham says in passing, God made everybody equal. For some reason, it speaks into the psyche of Peter J. Daniels and he realizes, wait a minute, if God made everybody equal, then the guy who has hardware across the street, the guy who is wealthy, a wealthy businessman across the street, is just like me. I'm just like them. Guess what he does? He starts working on his mind. He goes and buys three, three dictionaries and starts reading and crafting words and learning words. He reads a thousand biographies. He reads mathematics. He reads commerce. He reads economics. He builds a business, a multi-billion dollar business in Australia. Right now he's on a mission to enrich the kingdom of God by raising up 300 millionaires. This happened because of inspiration. Don't you ever tell me inspiration doesn't work. So sometimes these mental blockades in our mind, they need the right kind of inspiration. And that's all. Let me speak to you if you're an inspirational speaker, if you're a pastor, if you're a preacher. Every single Sunday, your job is to listen to what God says and go and inspire the people of God. People have just two hours with you on a Sunday. Sometimes some of you is just 30 minutes. Make sure that as these guys come, you're speaking the oracles of God. God works through inspiration. God works and lifts people through inspiration, through revelation, and through motivation. Don't you ever dare speak against motivational speaking, speak against inspiration speakers. Let me tell you, a thimble of inspiration is able to quench the fires of discouragement. How many times have we gone into church or into a, a seminar where we are so down and out and so discouraged? And then we hear a song, or we hear someone speaking, or we hear a prayer. And our eyes are open and our strength and our, our spirit is strengthened and we rise up because of inspiration. Learn at all times to expose your mind to stories of people who went through all odds and they won. They came up against it. Look for inspiration in books. Look for inspiration in messages. Watch documentaries of, uh, of, of people like Lindbergh. Watch a documentary of building the Panama Canal, for example. Listen to inspirational speakers. Read stories of grace to grass. I mean, uh, uh, grace to grass. Uh, sorry, grass to grace. David versus Goliath and, and wounds to wow. Read all these things. Seek inspiration at all times. It has a way of removing these mental blockades inside of you. And it's not something that we do as an event. It's a process. The more your spirit is instructed to be positive and to stay inspired, the more you are dealing with your mental blockade, the more you are dealing a blow to it, the more you're bringing it down. And I'm speaking to myself. I hope even as you listen to this, I hope you're being inspired. I hope in any mental blockade that is telling you, you cannot do this. I hope you're being instructed, by the way. Not just being inspired, but I hope you're being instructed to do these things. Don't look for an immediate feedback out of it. It takes time. We're going to continue dealing with this. In fact, tomorrow we're going to come to a close of this section where we've been talking about the five ways in which you can deal with mental blockades. But until then, bye-bye. 
Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.